welcome to another exciting episode of the Andre the Beast Creighton Show with Yolanda and Smith. Today is a beautiful day. Like every other day, I am so pleased when individuals reach out and want to share their stories to the masses. Today is no different. I am pleased to have in studio by way of Zoom a young man who I saw his social media post and was truly taken away that he would be so willing to open up to the massive about the pain and the obstacles that he's overcome. Welcome to the Andre the Beast Creighton Show, Jason Jackson Jr. Welcome to the show, big guy. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Let's get right down to it. We we talked a little bit, and I was like, you know what? That's just going to get this show off the ground and get going. Tell the viewers who Jason Jackson Jr. actually is. I'm just a kid from a small town, man, uh, trying to live out in my purpose. I come from DeKalb, Texas, which is in Northeast Texas. Went to school and played football in Southeast Arkansas. Had a great time there. And, uh, you know, other than hunting, fishing, and loving every day, this is just kind of what I do, trying to be the person that God has called me to be and help others get closer to him and also just motivate them on our journeys because I know I know how hard it gets. And, uh, you know, to have a little spurt of inspiration along the journey can definitely be a difference maker. You play football. Is football big in, I know it's big in Texas. What made you go to Arkansas to play? Why not stay in Texas? Arkansas was just a place, um, the school that I went to, they had a history of winning. Um, the the culture there was was great. I never actually thought that I would end up there. I actually toured as just going to visit as a student um, when I was about 15 years old and I ended up there years later, but the winning history, I think we finished my senior year number four in the nation. And, uh, you know, we had some, there were some upsides, there were some downsides, but really the community and the camaraderie that we had as a team was something I would never trade. You said there was some upsides and some downsides. What was the, let's start with the upside. The upside was just uh, going out every day and competing with your brothers, going to win and building the relationships, you know, when I came in, my coach said that if you're looking for a place to come to where you can play and, um, you know, build a four year relationship, this is not the place for you. It's a place where you're going to build 40 year relationships. And he was definitely right when he said that, because, um, you know, football was the fun part. But the most memorable part was just being able to have some guys that I can still call on today, have coaches that I can call on today and know that they, they have my back with everything that I'm going through. Speaking of going through, I saw the post. We talked. I couldn't wait to have you come on the show and really impact individuals with your story. When did your life begin to change? Um, six months ago. Six months ago is whenever my life began to change. Explain to, to the viewers a little bit about that. Whenever I graduated college in December, um, it was just a rough time for me because I had always had that that community around me, the football players, the the coaches, the people coming up to you, you know, where you feel welcome, you feel like you have that community. Um, and then when I, I moved to Houston um, after I graduated college, it was just things were different. You know, you're getting adjusted to life, 21 years old. I had no family, no friends there. And I was just going through a bit of depression. Um, one thing that was that's important to note is, you know, with chasing my dreams and following my dreams, I, I wasn't hesitant in giving up something that I didn't feel like was for me. I moved to Houston to start a job. Everyone was so excited for me and proud of me because that's just kind of the American way. You know, whenever you get to a certain level, they expect you to graduate college and go get a good job and retire at 65 years old and you've lived a great life. Right. And I just, I, I didn't see that for myself. I was like, this is that not- sounds really cliche, doesn't it? Like, every, yes. what do you want out of life? Well, I want to have a good job, good house, and and die at 65. <laughs> right, yeah, it wasn't for me. So um, I started my job January 9th, and I quit my job January 23rd with no type of, like, supporting income, nothing. It was just like, all right. You know, I, 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 I tell people all the time that I believe in God and I trust that he going to make a way for me. All right, God, let's see it. And everybody called me crazy. They questioned why I was doing what I was doing. And um, I would say not even not even three weeks later is whenever my life began to change. And that's whenever I took things to social media. And um, so let's go back for a minute. A lot of people don't have that ability to do that. You're always supposed to like, 
have something before you quit your job. You took a flying leap. What was that precise moment that you said, I'm done? I was sitting in the office one day, well, several days, but the one day was like, okay, yeah, this is this, I'm not doing this. Um, I was sitting in there and you know, they just had they were assigning me work. The work that I was doing wasn't hard. I was sending emails all day. It would be like 12, 13 hours a day, six days a week. And here I am, I'm 21 years old. I'm coming from being very active, being, you know, kind of a, a social butterfly in a sense, just being an athlete on campus and stuff. And I'm like, like, I'm looking at them and they're like just almost like robots. And I'm like, there's no way that y'all actually like do this. You're like, definitely in the matrix now. Yeah, <laughs> I was just looking at them. Neil, Neil. <laughs> Like, man, there's no way that y'all wake up every day and like tell yourselves, I have to come. There's nothing else I can do. And so once I, I like I just stopped working like and I was just looking at people and seeing how they were working. Yeah. I was like, there's no way that y'all think I'm going to get to this level. Like, there's no way I'm going to allow myself to get to this point. So, hey, 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 hey Jason, check this out. What was the advance? What, what was the advancement? role there like okay you you're doing you're doing emails and everybody's like you know hey neil they're all passing out the envelopes what what was the next level manager of the second level of emails like what was the advancement process there it was like you would go from sending the emails to processing the emails and i was like what like it was it made no <laughs> sense licking the scalp <laughs> right yeah so I'm like, okay, I got to find something different. So right. that, I went home. I left work early that day. Um, I'm not going to lie. I did lie. I was like, I'm feeling a little sick. Went home early. Then that was it. They never saw me again. I think some of them actually follow me on social media now. And we we weren't like, we weren't very close then, but they, I guess they found out who I was or what I was doing now. So that's how look, that they Look, they're checking their phone. Neil, go to the elevator now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so then what happens? Okay, you get that inspiration and you you walk out and you don't have a support. That's that's scary. What do you do now? Yeah, it's very scary. I mean, it always feels good whenever you you have the idea right away. I feel like that's with anything. Whenever you have that that spur of the moment idea, like, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm gonna go all in with it and I know I'm something gonna happen. That's how I felt. January 23rd, I felt like that. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be good, blah, blah, blah um didn't know what to expect I was like I'm gonna get into real estate got into real estate never made a sale never did anything and I was like right, this is not it like I was literally making no money um all I had was a, a credit card that was about maxed out and so I was down man I was like okay now maybe you I never said like I should go back to that job, but I was, I was like, just hey. getting ready to ask that because that was already messed up to begin with. So right. I, I, I never had that idea. I never had that thought, but I did say there was a time when I was like, maybe you should have waited a little longer. But right when that moment came, right when those ideas came into my head, that's whenever I began to see um, my life start to change. And the way that it started changing was the craziest thing ever. Um, I mentioned uh, to you that I will go on TikTok and if you scroll down on my page, I don't delete them for a reason. I haven't even went back and watched them yet because I want to kind of give it some time to resonate because I still don't realize that I am where I am yet. Yeah. Uh, but February 2nd, I think I made my first TikTok video and I was just talking myself through a situation, talking myself through that situation where I really didn't know what was next. I was just depressed. I had no money. I had no friends. Nobody was there that I could call on and just go to for support. And I was just talking to myself, making video diaries to see, you know, look back on later, like, man, you did get through it. Like everything gonna be all right whenever something else comes up. And um, the, the very video that I started talking about my relationship with God and how, how God would, uh, would, would supply for me, that video changed my life and my life has not been the same since that night. Really? Let's go back for a minute. You share something that was really profound. Mm -hmm. And trust me, my heart goes out to you because I wish everybody had that ability to say, this isn't for me. Yeah. I, I, I have friends, trust me, that work in high profile companies and they hate their jobs. Right. They do it because it's money. You know, I'm mean, like, 
That's the only reason why you go because it's money. Well, I want to retire at 65. They, uh, what's to say you're going to live at 65? Right. You did it at a young age, but the, the you did it with a risk. But you shared with me something in Papu. You you didn't have a support group. Where was your 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 mom, your dad, and your siblings during these during this time of of of, of trouble that you didn't reach out to them? Or where are they in your life? Um, so I come from a, a, a single mother household, a single parent household. My mother raised my, me and my brothers, um, had some help from the community and my grandparents as well. My father was actually incarcerated. Um, so he was sentenced to life, to 20 years to life in prison the day that I started crawling. I was nine months old. It was April 2nd, 2002. And um, he had recently just got out um, September of 2022. So I was 21 years old. And it's not that they weren't there, but it was almost to the point as, well, you know, my dad just now getting out of prison, there was nothing that he could really do for me. He wasn't on his feet yet. Uh, my mother, you know, we've kind of struggled all of our lives to just try to make ends meet. My mom went from at one point making, this is not me saying this wrong, $300 a month and providing for herself and her kids. And that is crazy. Uh, yeah, it was I didn't know that until I was probably 20 years old. And I say that like that's a long time ago. Two years ago. Yeah, just, yeah, two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh so I, you know, I didn't really have any any support. There was like I could reach out to them, but the only thing that they could give me was what I was giving myself, and that was kind of some comforting words. So I just had to kind of find something that was bigger than me and that was bigger than why I was doing it. And um, as far as friends and my brothers, you know, my brothers. I have my brothers are younger. I have one older brother, but he's just a year older than I am. And yeah, it's kind of the same thing. The only thing that we've ever known was it, it ain't going to rain forever. You know, the sun got to shine again. Just keep going, keep your head down, keep pushing. So, and I can tell myself that. So that's just kind of how I had to deal with it and get through it. When, when, when you, when you hear that your mom took care of you guys with $300 a month, what goes through your mind? How do you change your mindset? You already dealing with shit already. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. Now to hear that, do you, how do you, how do you focus from that moment on? How do you change your mindset now? It, it really went from like, okay, if she can make it off of $300 a month with kids and herself and bills and a car and you know, all this, I'm like, okay. I know that I, I I can get through this. Like, this is nothing compared to that, you know? And I had to really hone in and just tell myself, if you want to make a different life for yourself and, you know, make sure that your your kids and, and your mom in general never have to go through that ever again, you got to start taking a step today to make that difference. And that's whenever I really started to, uh, to begin to see my life change. But it started with the discipline and knowing that sometimes you may not know where you're going, Mm -hmm. but you know where you don't want to go so you just yeah. do, do what you need to do to not go to that place and you find yourself somewhere else so i had to do that that's what i had to do you share with me the impact of your father and i thought that was very touching the fact that you were still in contact with your dad throughout his incarceration um He's still in your life right now, but you shared with me something I thought was really strange. You, the, the, the crime that your father committed, you had to attend school with the, the victim. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, my father, my father was, um, he was incarcerated on a murder charge. And at the time, obviously I was very young and my teacher at the time, her name is, uh, Miss Ruthie Ford. And we, we spoke and she doesn't mind her name being mentioned, but, she, she was, um, her brother was the person that was the, that was murdered on, in that, in that case. And she, I didn't know that growing up. I didn't know that until I was about 18 years old. And my mother told me, and I would have never known because she treated me like I was one of her own kids. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of, when my mom told me, it kind of made me sit back and reflect a little bit because just thinking about me being Jason Jackson Jr., my dad being Jason Jackson, and having a, a traumatic experience like that where 
whenever you see a name, it could just kind of automatically trigger, yeah. you know, those emotions and those feelings that you had whenever you first see that name. So um, I, it just kind of made me realize, like, you never really know what somebody is going through and the power of just people, the power of love, man, because she, she really, I, I like I said, I never would have known. And she told my mom that she would make sure that I was taken care of and she wouldn't, you know, hold anything against me because it wasn't anything that I did. Um, you know, it wasn't my decision. I'm just here. So she made sure that I was taken care of for sure. That is, that is beautiful. So your dad was still inspirational to you throughout his incarceration by, and people don't understand, I, you know, we look at it like, okay, your dad has to be there physically, but you was there to see your dad. Your dad still was there as a role model for you moving forward. Now that he's home, I'm glad he's home. I'm glad you guys are back together. What's the relationship like with, with, with your father? And then we'll go back to the story of your uh, coming out of your job and going to the, another part, trying to give people indication of the support cast and, and that there was none there. Now they're starting to become there and you're starting to evolve. Right. Um, our relationship now is great. Uh, you know, we, we contact each other, reach out to each other all the time. And, you know, he do, he does get on me sometimes because with how life is now, it's just kind of hard to get to my phone. I actually had to get another phone just so I could kind of separate the two. But, uh, yeah, we're good. I'm actually going to see him this Thursday because I got to go speak in Houston. But, uh, yeah, he's that's my guy, man. He always makes sure that I'm good and make sure that I kind of doing the right things, even with how fast life is moving. I like I like that. So let's go back to you quit the job, the no support cast. You're 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 trying to make a difference. I get it. You're trying to make a difference. You've seen the stuff that your mom went through. You've seen now how it is to try to go with three hundred dollars, and she did it. Take us down that road. Keep going. Yeah. So um, I would say about it was the day the day I remember the exact day. It was February sixth of. 2023 and that's when I hit the lowest that's when I hit rock bottom man like I I was trying to you know motivate myself through it and talk through it and you know hey everything gonna be all right just every day right. and whenever you finally have to sit in and face reality like it ain't it ain't a lot that words can do for you you know you just gotta you gotta in take there. it on. yeah right yeah so in there. I, I I had that moment and that's whenever I told myself okay you know you got two options you can either stay down and, you know, no. let life beat up on you, or you could get up and have the greatest comeback in, from anybody in your family history. So, <laughs> and I, I'm not one of those guys, man, that's just going to, you know, just take a beating just because, you know, I got to fight when I can. So right. you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't just walk away from the situation, but until I could get up on my feet, I had to crawl to crawl to the door or something until I could get my footing back, you know? So that's what really helped me out. So when you, what, what door did you crawl through first? What was the opening moment that changed the direction in your life? Outside of your mind, what, what doors actually opened up for you? Yeah. Um, the, like I mentioned that first video that I made, um, I had really got close to God during that point in my life. And I was like, you know, I feel like there's, I, I've tried everything I could try. You know, I, I got, I've done everything that I can do and it obviously ain't working. I've tried real estate, real estate. I, these people talking to me, they bring it in $30,000 checks. I'm like, God, I don't even have $30. Like, you know, so. Did you, did you um, feel like asking them for some gas money? <laughs> and there were times when I wanted to, man, but I was like, nah, one thing that really helped me was the idea of, I don't want to ask nobody. It's, you could say it's prideful, but the way that I was I was looking at it was wasn't pride in my eyes because I knew I just knew that something was gonna come from it. Like I was saying, I don't want to ask nobody for help because whenever I whenever I do get there, wherever there is, I won't be able to give anybody else but God credit for it. That was my mindset I like going that. in. Yeah, yeah. So man, I just I had to tough it out for a long time though. Like literally until just two months ago, I was in that same position the whole time. Nobody knew, like nobody knew on social media. You got hundreds of thousands of followers and nobody knows that you don't even, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. I had um, June 10th, I had $0 in my bank account. Like, and I'm talking about, I'm down completely broke, nothing. And 
you know, I'm just praying, praying, praying. You know, I'm like, man, something got to shake, something got to shake. And like I said, I have hundreds of thousands of followers at this point. And I was like, people just think because you have followers, you rich and all of that. I did not have any money at that time. I was actually, I actually had zero dollars to my name. Isn't it, isn't it amazing how we now, you know, you're only in your 20s, but look how we classify our self-worth. Right. You know, through a social media, through likes, followers, subscribes, and nobody knew. Now you got all these followers, but nobody knows what the hell you're going through right now. So exactly. just imagine if, but then you put it out there, then what happens? Um, the, so that was June 10th, June, 10 days later, I was like, okay, I, I don't have, you know, I, I love speaking. I love being able to, to help and motivate and inspire people. But I was like, I got to take this thing to the next level. I got to find something that I can do. And that's whenever I began to see those changes come in. And so 10 days later, I was like, well, over the course of that time, I was saying to myself, you have to make a business decision to make money doing this. You know, it can't just be I'm doing this for fun, which is that's fine. But you in a position right now where you can't have fun yet. You got to make some money because if you don't, you ain't going to be able to do nothing. Man, 10 days later, I woke up. I had five figures in my bank account and it's just been been up from there because i was like i i got i made the decision like okay yeah this is what you got to do and how do you get five figures in your bank account overnight like that it was like it was just kind of me um acknowledging my worth because i was giving away a lot of free game like just a lot of a lot of knowledge a lot of stuff for free like when you go on my instagram you go on TikTok, whatever whatever i'm saying it's like you don't have to pay anything all you got to do is have an account and then people wanted to, you know, they wanted to have sit down one on one conversations with me, whether it be over the Internet or in person. And I'm like, you know, OK, I'll do it for twenty dollars. And then I started thinking, I'm like, dude, no, no, you could go find twenty dollars somewhere. You're not going to find another me. That's the that's the type of mindset that I had to have. So but you had to change the whole, yeah. the whole concept of your worth. Yes, because I had to start approaching it as a business because that's essentially what I am. I'm I'm my own business. And if I wanna if I wanna eat, then I gotta make some money off of my name. So I began to say, okay, this is if you want this, this is what I'm doing. And I apologize if the prices are too high, but I understand the value of what I'm bringing to you. And this is what it is. So that's how I started taking off from there. And brands and people just started contacting me and I would throw out a price and they'd be like, well, I don't think that you, and I'm like, well, you should go find somebody else. So, and they would, they would be like, okay, we want to stay, you know, just trying to negotiate you to get the lower price. You know, yeah. uh, so how, 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 let's go back to your dad for a minute. Like, how is he adjusting? What are you teaching him about the new social media platforms and how to, you know, get his career off the ground? You got your career back off the ground. How do you take him to the next level? He, he's not a big social media guy he don't really i don't know if he understands what's going on he'll like um somebody will show him one of my videos every now and then and he'll text me or call me about it and be like hey boy i saw the video that you posted blah blah, blah. um but i don't think he really too much cares he's just trying to like make sure his yard look good make sure the house is good everything like that so he's not really too big in the social media what do you tell individuals that was in your situation you know, you, the way I look at it is you're too young to really have problems. You know what I mean? But that's not true. Anybody can have problems. But what do you tell someone that might have been in your shoes? How do they, what, what, what would you tell them to overcome that? What kept you being strong? My faith in God, um, you know, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been everything for me. That's that's the only way that I can say I made it through because I, I didn't have nobody. I didn't have a I didn't have a friend that I could call when I was when I was down. I didn't have anyone that I could just rely on and say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. What advice do you have? You know, um, but another thing is. You never think that it can't be you. And I feel like that always leaves you at a humble mindset um, and people like to think about that from a, a negative perspective, like never think you can't be the one that's that's broke or sad or whatever, but also never think that you can't be the one that's up. You the one that's, that's happy, you know, because 
I don't care what position you are in. I don't care where you are right now and what things are looking like. You could have a billion dollars today. That everything could be gone tomorrow. You know, you could be on a on a platform. You could have all the followers. You could have all the money, and you could be the brokest person in the world just because you don't even have a support system around you, and you know you're feeling alone when you have all of these followers. So, um, never think that it can't be you because nothing lasts forever. Everything is temporary. Even a, when somebody has a, a beautiful rain and everybody is praising them, it won't last forever. I'm not saying that they'll fall to rock bottom, but that nothing lasts forever. So whether it be the 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 glory or the or the rain, everything passes. With all that while. you with all that you went through, what were the three things? What were the three things that you looked at in your life and you said, I've overcome these three things? I overcame a poverty mindset. That was the biggest thing. Um, which was feeling like I didn't have enough when I, even when I had enough, you know, certain times I would have enough money to go buy groceries, but I would go like buy bologna and be like, no, nah, this, this will make me last because I, I need to make sure that I have enough just in case. And it's like, you know, you got to get out of that mindset or you will forever be there. And you'll, it's, it'll be like a generational curse. Everyone under you will start thinking like that too. And, you know, you, life is meant to be lived you got to experience what living is like you can't just exist and so that was the that was the biggest one another thing that i that i did i feel as though i overcame was being able to have those real conversations with people growing up in a in a community that i grew up in and i feel like it's very prominent in the black community is you don't talk about your feelings like you don't talk about your emotions if you're feeling something if you're going through something <laughs> hey you gotta you gotta tough that out and you know we're gonna pray about it and most of the time they're not even praying for you so you just gotta i had to be able to come to myself and say it's okay to not be okay it's okay to feel bad it's okay to have those days where um you know things just don't feel right right uh that was the that was another big one and finally i would say i overcame myself and once i overcame myself everything else started falling into place because I didn't realize the abilities and the capabilities that I had until I was put in a position where I had to use them. And once I overcame that, I was like, not in an arrogant or cocky way, but- Once you, you got to... out the matrix, you was good to go. Oh yeah, that was it. That's all I needed, man. That's all I needed. So so, so what's, what's, what's next? The future looks bright. Tell the viewers what's next for you. Yeah, so going forward, I'll be, um, kind of going into more long form videos on YouTube and stuff. I'll still be posting on Instagram and TikTok, but I'll be going to YouTube, just kind of putting out some more beneficial content, longer content that people can engage with, kind of showing them through my life. And I'll also be uh, dropping a podcast here pretty soon. I'm looking at about the the uh, December start date um, for my first episode, and it'll be centered around some of some of the people's favorite athletes in the world and just talking about their life outside of sports and you know how, what they do to decompress and themes that are that everybody deals with not just you see on tv right how can the viewers reach you um you can reach me via email djasonjacksonjr at gmail.com you could also reach out to my instagram as well i don't have my tiktok dms open because People kind of be talking crazy on there sometimes, but um, those two ways are the primary ways to reach me. Okay, leave the viewers with something spot, some something inspirational. Uh, one thing I could say is this, man: whatever you're going through right now, whatever you've been through, and whatever you're gonna go through, I promise you, it's all for the better. If you can find the good in it, I promise it'll take you further than ever you further than the bad uh, could take you. So. Um, you could take a hundred losses, 50 losses, a thousand losses, and all you need is that one win to set you up for the rest of your life. So no matter how bad it looks right now, no matter how much you've been losing, all you got to do is win once. And I promise you everything is going to be up from there. Hey, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great interview. Appreciate you, brother, coming on. So anything we can do to help spread your message, we're here to do that. This has been another exciting episode of the Andre the Beast Craven.